Previously on Babies Behind Bars. Your boyfriend's black and you're not sure the baby is black. Who's going to care for your baby? Hey, Mom. Can you come and get the baby? You see the crib all the time and you just, you're like, well, where's the baby? <laughs> the baby's not here yet. Mine will be very soon. The number of women in America's prisons is soaring, up 400% in the past 30 years. The United States has more female inmates than any other country in the world, and prisoner pregnancy rates are higher than ever before. If you're pregnant and in prison, you pretty much got to feel like you're, you failed something really badly. Every year, hundreds of babies are born behind bars. Hey, Mari, mommy love you, she miss you. Most are taken away from their mothers after just 24 hours. I can't keep my daughter. This is just not fair. <sighs> now, a radical new program is allowing a handful of incarcerated mothers to keep their babies in prison. Right there, where the fence is up out, is where they go outside and sit with the babies. But the scheme is not without controversy. There are those that would criticize and saying these women are being punished. Why should they have children in prison? There's people in here that's killed their kids. They had to go against a lot of people to get to be able to have babies on this premises. Seven mothers share their most intimate experiences. Should babies be allowed to live behind bars? I don't want to do this anymore. Seven miles west of downtown Indianapolis lies the Indiana Women's Prison, a maximum security facility that houses 670 inmates. The women have committed a range of crimes, from drug dealing and prostitution to burglary, assault, and murder. But the Indiana Women's Prison is also a place of hope for a small group of its inmates. In 2007, the prison instituted a radical and pioneering program, the We Ones Nursery, where a handful of inmates are allowed to keep their babies behind bars. But if the rates for reincarceration are lower for women that have gone through this program, then we've done something right. If the rates of criminal activity by their children in five or 10 or 15 or 20 years are low, then we know we've done something right. But with around 40 pregnant women in the prison at any one time, and only 10 places in the baby dorm, competition is tough. Late last night, Rebecca was told that her cesarean section is scheduled for this morning at Wishard Hospital, seven miles away from the prison. Uh, Miss Johnson right there is going with me. As soon as I heard that phone ring, I knew it was for me. I'm so excited. It's about time. So what's the plan? Is your mom going to come? And... It's not my mom, actually. It's my mother-in-law. It's my fiance's mom. She takes care of my daughter right now. She's a real good person. Her name's Connie Fuller. She's one of the best people in the world. I'm hoping she's my labor coach, but we live four hours away. I'm hoping they got a hold of her. It would be kind of scary having to see that she was out of there. OK, Rebecca, I'm going to go on a strip search. You, so you got to be there at 7.30. Rebecca is strip searched and given a high visibility uniform. Hi, this is Officer Harris from Indiana Women's Prison. Are you her mother-in-law? Just before she leaves, the prison makes contact with Connie, Rebecca's mother-in-law and birth coach. Well, you know, uh, she's going out for her uh, C-section there, and they said she's supposed to be a coach. And uh, she is uh, getting ready to go out in about, like, five minutes. Yeah, today. But at such short notice, 
Connie faces a race against time to make it to the hospital. As Rebecca goes into the delivery room, news filters through that her mother-in-law hasn't made it to the hospital. I found out my mom's not making it. She's not making it? What happened with that? She didn't have a ride. She didn't have a ride to get it down okay, sure. That's too bad. Giving birth without a friend or relative for support is a typical experience for prisoners. The only familiar face is that of the prison guard. Try to relax, okay? Okay. One, two, three. Hold still. Uh oh. There you Hold go. Still. All right. Okay. It's all done. It's all finished. You said it was room 13. They call them right up there. You'll feel some pressure. You'll feel them pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Which shouldn't be anything sharp. It feel like that, okay? Wishard Hospital delivers up to 60 prisoners' babies each year. Look at that baby. Despite Rebecca's use of crystal meth in the past, the baby appears to be healthy. There we go. I like his name. Thank you. Hey, Hi. Back around again. Yeah, they're on skin right now, so. Um. That's my seventh baby. It's, it's exciting. This is what makes the job worth it. I can start on the other one. You got it? He's kind of wiggly, so I look at those little hands. Huge hands. Huge hands and huge feet. Uh-oh. Say hi, Mommy. Okay. He's beautiful, isn't he? Without her mother-in-law at the birth, it falls to Officer Crutchfield to give Wyatt his first feed. <laughs> Let me see. This has been so long. <laughs> He's latching right on. Convict Rebecca has recently endured a cesarean section, but just 48 hours after her surgery, she's heading back to jail. For security reasons, Rebecca's baby, Wyatt, will be brought to her cell in a couple of hours' time. Here, it's not like home. You know, mom's not gonna drop by and all that, but they've got a community of themselves and they help each other, they give each other advice, they give each other support. And some of the ladies I don't think have had a lot of real positive stuff in their lives. And I'm not sure that they believe in themselves at this point. Because, you know, if you're pregnant and in prison, you pretty much gotta feel like you're, you failed something really badly. And this is not changing the facts, but it's making them a whole lot better. And, and we have to show the ladies we believe in them and we believe that they can change and make a difference for their babies. I think you're gonna start a baby booming, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you guys did do it already. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. You're welcome, babe. Now we just gotta wait for him. Cute. It's Rebecca's first time in prison. Yeah, she was able to join life. the baby dorm program because her sentence is for a nonviolent crime. I'm very thankful that I got arrested when I did because I wouldn't have known I was pregnant. I could have harmed him even more because I was still getting high at the time. So I. I was getting him high. Basically, I didn't know I was pregnant. I oh, I felt so bad when I found out I was pregnant. I had to I had to make him do two more tests to make sure 100% I was pregnant. So I, I'm I'm thankful I got locked up. 
Um, I'm glad I'm here because I get to keep him with me. I get to bond with him. Because I missed everything for my daughter. Her first Halloween, Christmas, Easter. I'm not gonna do it again. They're too precious. It's a shame I didn't see that then, but I'm glad I see it now. It's not too late. I just hope these clothes fit him. He's big. <laughs> Baby Wyatt arrives home to the prison after medical and security checks. This is your bed for you. Unlike women on the outside, these new moms have a network of support all under one roof. Where does the doctor come in again? Well, anytime we need it, we need to call him and he'll come. Because I think he's got a cold in his arm. Well, he might just have a little tear duct stopped up. So check with Miss Green, but it, it looks like maybe his little tear duct is just plumbed up or something. Okay, let's go talk to Miss Green. Go talk to Miss Green. Thank you. Come on, Mr. Ryan. Aisha is also a new mom, but she doesn't have a place on the baby dorm. She was separated from her son within 24 hours of giving birth, and he's now in the care of Aisha's mother. Inside here is just my calendar. I count off my days. I have 36 days left until I go home to my son. And this is where I sleep. And I have a picture of him that I took at the hospital that stays right here. It's getting kind of old. But every time I turn over, I see him. I miss my son so much. This is the first blanket he was wrapped in after, you know, getting washed up and stuff. I kept it. It just reminds me of him. It gives me, I smell his scent still on it. And I sleep with it every night, close to me. I smell him. And I just come here and cry on the bed. The prison encourages moms on the baby dorm to breastfeed. Even though she's apart from her baby, Aisha has chosen to express her milk and bag it up for her mom to collect. You defrost one, unthaw one of them? Yep, and put it in the bottle. Just give it to him. And just give it to him. How long does this milk last? And he eats a lot. He's fat. I honestly think probably to maybe Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> That's it? That's what I'm thinking. Well, now, he's an eating piece of furniture. Yes, he is. And today is Saturday. She'll start him when she get home. Probably Come Tuesday. Tuesday he, he'll be out. He'll right. be ready for some more. Yeah. Ms. Aisha, you don't look too happy today. I just miss my son. I haven't seen him in the last two weeks. Oh. So it's I'm used to seeing them every other weekend, and my mom ain't been able to come. Aisha is in jail for stabbing her boyfriend. Like many of the inmates at Indiana Women's Prison, she's serving time as the direct result of a violent relationship. So I'm going to pass out the questions that, that I have here, questions to ask before we fall in love. Because a lot of times what happens is uh, I would counsel with women, and they would say, man, if, I, if only I knew this before I fell in love with this person. I was in an abusive relationship. And um, every time I called the police on my ex-boyfriend, they told me to press charges on him. Well, I was being dumb and kept taking him back. So the last time that he put his hands on me, I decided to cut him with a knife. And so I stabbed him a couple times, and he called the police on me, and they arrested me. I think that they should have had it be self-defense because they have on record multiple times of him putting his hands on me, and they even have pictures of bruises. But 
I guess they figured since I stabbed him that I needed to be punished. And where he's still around, walking around every day, like he's God or something. Nothing ever happened to me. He never got locked up for nothing or nothing. All he got was stabbed and some stitches, and that's it. I went to jail in March. I got bonded out in April. And in June, I met my baby daddy. So I guess I didn't wait that long to get in another relationship. I want you to tell me a question that you think that you should ask a guy before you fall in love with him. Is he a sex offender? Okay. Like what, what are they trying to do to support their families? What about his name? Because now the trend is guys are giving false names because, you know, they have the program uh, Jobs or Jail, where if they don't pay child support, they can actually go to jail or prison. So that's the trend now, is for guys to give their wrong name. That's one of the things I want you to be aware of, because some of the ladies are saying that what they're doing is looking in the glove compartment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> looking in the glove compartment, because a lot of times you'll find out some information, like for example, if you know that somebody's married and they got five kids by five different women and they don't pay child support and they've been in prison for being a molester and they got, if you know all the answers to these questions and they're all negative, I don't care how good looking the person is, would you date them? Yeah. Mostly, it's grandmas who take on the responsibility for the babies and children of offenders. Families are only allowed to visit once a week for a maximum of four hours. Even toddlers and babies are patted down at security to check that they're not carrying drugs, weapons, or contraband. Today, Aisha's mom is due to bring baby Imari to see her for the first time in five weeks. When I first thought about it, yeah, I'm like, I was freaking out, like, wow, I gotta have my baby. Well, I'm incarcerated, just scared. My first baby, I had so many scares, but then my mom told me everything was gonna be all right and that she was gonna come get him. She told me how she was gonna bring him to see me and stuff. Did y'all bring the cooler? Yeah, I got a cooler. Four bags with five ounces of milk in her. Morning and, and before you go to bed, when it helps him sleep. He got his daddy nose, he got a big nose, got. <laughs> Mommy, kiss it, though. Yeah, you white. Oh, you look your mommy in the eyes. Oh, son. Yes. Mommy, love you, Imari. The handsomest baby I've seen in the world. I just think he's real wonderful. I want my son to do everything that I did. I want him to graduate from high school. I want him to go off to college, get in some sports, maybe, have kids one day. Um, I don't ever want him to put his hand on a female. I don't want him to do that. I want him to be successful. Oh, this is my baby. I'm gonna miss him. I want to keep him here. I'd be worried about him forgetting who I am. Aisha will be released from prison next month. But with levels of reoffending at 30%, Will she be able to give her son the stability he needs to fulfill her dreams for him? Mom, I really love you. At the Indiana Women's Prison, a radical new program is allowing a select few inmates to keep their newborn babies with them while serving their time. But the baby dorm is not the only initiative in place to encourage a stronger bond between mothers and their children. The Family Preservation Program has been running for 14 years. For many women, especially those with long sentences, it's the only opportunity to forge a relationship with their children. I know, you do it. One of the nannies on the baby dorm has got a two-hour scheduled visit with her disabled daughter, Savannah. The program allows offenders with a good record of behavior an opportunity to spend an extra six hours a month with their children. Me too. I'm gonna be home soon. I know. 
The unit gives Tammy a chance to hear about her daughter's life, of which she can't be a part. Class is so quiet, I, I, I can concentrate better. You said you got your report card. Oh, yeah. My uh, report card, I had, um, I had 40s and um, a, a B and an A. Um, but, um... But I brought my 40s up to um, a C minus C and a B. That's good. I'm proud of you about that. Tammy has three daughters. Although it's her first time in prison, she's missed out on much of their childhoods because of her substance abuse. Photographs are monitored, and women have to buy tokens if they want a picture taken with their kids. Smile. OK, I'm good. OK, is it really good? I don't think we have time. We only have 10 minutes. You want to look at our pictures? For Tammy, the photos are the only way she can see her children grow up. Huh? Honey, we don't have time to play another game. Two hours isn't very much time at all. I hate it. You want one of that one? I ha always take pictures, and I always take multiple, because those are my memories. The only way I can see my girls growing up, I guess, when I'm not there. I'm always taking pictures. I'm always begging everybody at home, take pictures. Anything that happens, take a picture for me so I can see them. What's going on? Don't cry, OK? Because you're going to make me cry. And I'm going to be really strong. I'm not going to cry. Don't cry. Make her cry, though. I know. I'm not. God. I just want to put you in my pocket. Me You're too. about small enough you'll fit. <laughs> Tammy doesn't know when she'll see her daughter again. Her cousin, who cares for Savannah, has four children of her own and finds it hard to make the four-hour round trip. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life is always telling my kids bye, not being there, not being there for them when they need me. You know, not being able to be there for her when she was in her surgery and just, and I'm not living up to my responsibility and it's hard. I mean, she's disabled and she's came through so much and I don't want her to have to turn to drugs and I want her to know where it will lead her and she's a great kid. She is, I mean, I mean, she's doing really good now in school. And she is sad that I can't be there for her right now. And she just hurts. She hurts really bad. She wants her mom, but she knows she's where she can be right now, where she's taken care of, right? Yeah. Grandma took care of me good, but Grandma couldn't do it all no more. Right? Yeah. And she's a handful, aren't you? Yes. No, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> You're good. Don't cry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. You just want mama home, don't you? Yeah. This is the hardest thing. I love seeing him. But my heart just breaks. It's like, I leave. It's hard. Tammy knows all about visiting a parent in prison. She spent her childhood seeing her mom, Lois, on death row. Kids at school would start picking on me and they make fun of me and... Why? Why? Because my mom, they'd say, they'd talk about my mom, mom, kill my dad, and just start saying stuff like that. And so then I would defend my mom. No, my mom didn't. She did not do that. And I'd always ask her and she'd say, no, no. Well. On my 16th birthday, I was sitting in the visitor room, and she, I asked her, I was like, did you, did you kill my dad? And she told me the truth. I remember just so mad at her. Um, and it, it was, it wasn't so much her because she killed my dad. It was so much I defended her for so long, you know, took up for her and, and stuff. And, so I didn't really talk to her. I got really mad at her, and I really didn't talk to her much. And when my grandma would come, I wouldn't come with her, my grandma. Lois killed Tammy's father in self-defense, but wasn't indicted. Then, a year later, 
Lois arranged for the murder of Tammy's stepfather after he'd threatened to walk out on the family. She was sentenced to death, later commuted to 60 years in prison. In a bizarre twist, both mother and daughter are now serving their sentences at the same time in the same facility. For Tammy, it's a chance to reconnect with her mother, but their relationship is strained. Mom, don't bet on it. I'm just saying, just don't get your heart set on if he's gonna come out. Sometimes I just feel like, um, I felt like she just, yeah, she lost her kids, but she didn't see why she lost her kids sometimes. Um, and then sometimes, and then I would say, I felt, I started feeling like she didn't do it for the right reasons. Like, you know, she, yeah, she had Johnny killed, he deserved it. But then the way she would talk, she would say, what well, was, well, we were gonna lose anything, everything, he was leaving. Is that the reason why? It felt like it was selfishness. You didn't do it because he would make you sit there on the couch and watch him beat me because I had wet the bed and I was three. He beat me with a leather strap. I mean, he molested me and I know she didn't know that, but what would she have done? And that's just all the things that would go through my head. I was so mad at her for so long. I w did not really protect them the way I was supposed to. I mean, Tammy, when she was only four and he, he molested her. I know no matter what, Tammy really don't feel this way, but I do, I mean, because she's still very hurt because of what Johnny did to her, and I am too, but I know that I had no right to take a life, his life. I just wish I would have known about what he did to Tammy and then had him arrested. And even when I was sentenced to death, that's the only thing that was... I wasn't really scared about dying. I was scared and didn't know what was going to happen to the kids. At Wishard Hospital, Heather is in labor with her eighth child. One child has been adopted, and her younger children are cared for by relatives. As she did not qualify for a place on the baby dorm, Heather will also have to give up her new baby. I don't want to do this anymore. Heather has told staff she has a rare blood disorder, so they're unwilling to give her an epidural until a blood test shows it's safe. Most women that get epidurals get it at the point at which it, the labor gets very uncomfortable, so they don't feel the more intense contractions that are in the middle and the later part of labor. Some people aren't as, as good at dealing with intense pain, and they just they don't want to experience it. Oh, God! I'm feeling for her. I hear her in there screaming. I know she wants it an epidural bad, but. Oh, God! With contractions coming more frequently and the baby's head engaged, there's no chance now of getting an epidural. Big breath, big breath, big breath. Got a place uh, for your feet. Uh, 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 okay, uh, now when you have a contraction, you feel free to push. Uh, push push the big burn, push the burn. It'll burn, just push yeah. the burn. Keep pushing. Okay, oh, push get her out of me. She's almost there. Oh, oh, you had her. Kimmy, mommy's scared. Her name's Kimmy. Kimberlia, I am so proud of you. She is big, Heather. I wonder she weighs. Heather isn't sure who the father of her baby is. She's hoping the color of her child will give her a clue. 
hard work for them too, isn't it? She's beautiful. She's trying to get her colon. She is. Mm -hmm. I think she's mixed. Too. She's got her daddy's nose. She's mixed. You can tell now. She's trying to get some color. She's got her daddy's nose. Look at all that hair. You're so gorgeous. In just 24 hours' time, Heather's baby will be taken from her, and she'll return to prison not knowing when she'll see her again. Heather is about to return to Indiana Women's Prison just 24 hours after giving birth to a baby girl. She's ready to roll whenever, whenever you get her ready, okay. son. And then what about the baby? Uh, take will you the take baby her the before she leaves then? Or? Yes. But she's been refused a place on the We Ones Baby Dorm, a pioneering new program that allows selected inmates to keep their babies behind bars. And here a second. She's hungry. Newborn Kimberlia will be placed into foster care. Is he here yet? Okay. I'm gonna miss her. I wanna put her back. That's what I wanna do. I wanna put her back. If I can take her back with me. I just think the rules at the prison are, are stupid for the baby door. Because I have a juvenile battery, I can't keep my daughter. This is not fair. Come here. Come here. I need to stop, because I know she's going to be well taken care of, and I'm going to get to see her. Let's go down this way. What is this for? I just need you to sign your discharge paper here. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and give me her bottle and yeah. we'll finish feeding her? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Aisha and her friend Jessica were also ineligible for the Wee Ones program and were separated from their babies. They have supported one another through tough times. Now they're planning for a life outside the prison with their families. I know when I get out, my mom is going to have me a um, baby shower and a barbecue for my birthday. I'm looking forward to that. The following weekend, my sister's husband's cooking. Here in a big old cookout. You know what I think is great that we get to go home this year and be home for Christmas, and then we have kids to shop for. That's going to be great. Take them trick or treating. I mean, look how long we've been in here and haven't got in no trouble. So I mean, we can do the same on the outs. Plus, we have kids to think about. So trouble is not going to be on our mind. Jessica will be released from prison at midnight. Here's the real friend in front of me. Okay, you'll be okay. Don't cry. And Aisha will have to get through her last days inside without either her friend or her baby. Bye-bye. Two weeks after giving birth, Heather is about to be reunited with her baby for the first time. Kimberlia has been brought to the prison by the Amish couple who are caring for her. I haven't seen my baby in two weeks. I'm ecstatic about seeing her. I'm gonna really cry. Hi. Miss Rumble. 
Oh my god, I'm good. She looks like you, I believe. <laughs> well, we want to keep the kiddos and the mothers together as much as we can this yes. week. That's what we're doing it for, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sweet. Are you gonna get mad at me? Even after spending some time with her daughter, Heather is still unsure who the father is. Oh. No, I think she's TJ's. But I don't know where he's at. Because remember I told you that meth lab blew up on him and he had to be life flighted to St. Louis to that burn hospital. I don't know what happened after that. I really do think her last name is going to change to Kulowinski once we have some blood work done. Kulowinski? The one with the meth lab that blew okay. up. Remember, I gave you the names to see if they were, see if he was in jail or not. Shh, 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 What is the plan? Um, she had said that it, it's fine to wait six months after she's released. For the baby? To take the baby. Is that okay, okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Anything to help you out, we will be back. And we'll yeah. hand the baby yeah. back and we'll, Heather and I will leave. It was back. nice meeting you, Heather. Yes. Thank you for bringing her. Oh, you're welcome. We'll take good care of her for you. And I'll see you guys next month, right? Yeah. OK. I think we'll set it up with Joe. OK. okay. Yeah. I really like them. I like them a lot. I'm just looking forward to my visit next month. Good, good. I'm not going to cry. I mean. Now that I know that she's well taken care of, I mean, I miss her. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy to see her today. She's well taken care of. I can see that. So the difference is going to be you're not going back to your hometown. No, I'm not. Not getting involved with the people you were involved with right. before. The only person that I would probably have to be involved with would be Kimberly, his father. And that's, I have to, for the rest of my life, he'll be part of my life. Yeah, he knew I was pregnant. He came and bonded me out of jail because I was pregnant. Well, we'll need to talk more about that. Yes. About your contact with him. Yeah, because I need to find out where he's at. Now that I see her and, and there's a really good, strong possibility he's either in a hospital in St. Louis or he's in my county jail. But if he's had a meth lab blow up in his face... That was December, or um, that would have been March the 15th. You have to consider how he's going to affect you and your daughter. Right. But he never did it around me. He never did it at home. And this time he did it at somebody's house and the whole apartment building blew up. Well, he may be incarcerated for a while. Right, but I... will give you yeah. time to consider your yeah. options. Yeah. Heather still has nine months to run on her sentence. Will she be able to put her past behind her once she's free and create a future for her and Kimberly? It's Mother's Day at Indiana Women's Prison. We oh, already got a lot of mail today. Shana! For inmates with children on the outside, it's an emotional occasion. But before they can be delivered to prisoners, all letters and parcels have to be checked for contraband, drugs, and weapons. They get jewelry they, they're not allowed to have. They get that shipped in. Um, cash, they're not allowed to have cash. So all that stuff like that has to be sent out. I've never gotten a weapon or drugs sent in, but I guess there's always a first. It's a pretty good job. It's not a bad job. And obviously, he's a football player. <laughs> uh, they can't see their loved ones, and I can. You know, so it's kind of humbling to see some of the things I see. And uh, you hug your children a little harder when you get to see them every day. You know what I mean? So, uh, oh, and that's a nice card, too. Rebecca, who gave birth to baby Wyatt 10 days ago, also has an 18-month-old daughter who lives with her mother-in-law. It says, Happy Mother's Day, Mommy, and then it says, Nevaeh, Wyatt, Mommy. Happy
happy thoughts, warm hugs, and lots of love too are in this special Mother's Day wish that's just for you. Love, Nevaeh and Wyatt. For Aisha, Mother's Day is a timely reminder of what prison has taken away from her as she approaches the end of her sentence. My family is important to me. Every day I look at these pictures four and five times a day and kiss them and just look at my family and remember what I have at home. And this is a reason why I will not come back to prison. Uh, Tammy has a card from her daughters, Savannah, Rihanna, and Sabrina. But her mind is on her relationship with her own mother. My mom's not in this cold-hearted murderer. She's not. It's, I'm not just saying that because she's my mom. Yes, she killed my dad, but everybody don't know the circumstances and the way that her life was. I mean, I feel bad because I did abandon her for so long. And I should have been there, but I didn't know it was like this. I really didn't. You know, the old saying, out of sight, out of mind, it, sometimes that's the way it was. It really was. I was mean to her because I didn't know how to deal with things. I mean, we went through a lot, and it wasn't good at first. So then I told Mom, I love you, so we have a much better relationship. I, I look forward to seeing her every day. OK, here's a card. It says, to my wonderful mother. It says, Mom, up until the last couple of years, we haven't been close. I am so thankful that we have finally became a real mother and daughter closeness, and I am grateful to you. There's no one I'd rather have as my mother. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day with love, Tammy. In the baby dorm, there's a Mother's Day party for the mothers, nannies, and babies. While the debate surrounding the Wee Ones nursery continues, the Indiana Department of Correction believes this controversial program is already paying off. We've looked uh, on the outside to see whether having women be able to stay with their children in prison works. We're testing that now, but all of the evidence that we believe is accurate says that there can't be but any good outcome, the best outcome for a mother who can stay with her child, not only for her, but for the child's sake while she's incarcerated. So we think it's win-win for a mother to be able to stay with her child while she's in prison and then get out and still be with her child. Whether the program will work for these women remains to be seen. Balbina and her daughter are at home after leaving prison the week of Angelina's first birthday. Bobby and her baby daughter are settling in well at the Wee Ones Nursery. Donna has secured a place on the baby dorm after the accusation of violence against her was dropped. I'm very lucky. Yeah, you're Got miles ahead family. there. Yeah. Are you okay, then? Heather's baby, Kimberlia, is still being cared for by the Amish couple. Following her release, Rebecca is living with her fiance, Thomas, her daughter, Neve, and baby son, Wyatt. Aisha is also out of prison and caring for her baby, Imari, full time. Lois will be released from prison in 2012 after serving nearly 30 years behind bars. Her daughter, Tammy, will have to wait another four years before she's reunited with her children. <laughs>